how has making this movie changed your relationship to sound and the city? I mean, I'm, I'm certainly, I've, I've always been, I suppose, hyper aware of sound. Um, this uh, movie certainly didn't help that. Uh, but at the same time, I, I think what I like about, you know, this movie at a base level is just I want audiences to be more aware of sound. I think it's, you know, we can't ignore it. And we all have, you know, coping mechanisms like Peter referenced. People walk around with headphones and you drown things out. But, you know, I walked 20 blocks to get here this morning and I'm passing jackhammers on the street. And I'm like, you know, instinctively, I'm OK, I'm covering up my ears. Why am I doing that? How is that going to affect my mood for the day? Um, and I think whether we like it or not, sound, we all have a relationship and it's subconsciously or consciously affecting you. And to be aware of it, I think, is a good thing. There are parts of the city where I love the sound. Yeah. You know, it's th there's this tunnel in Prospect Park where there's this guy who tap dances. And then you come out of that and there's like the sound of kids skateboarding along this one little section that like, and then they mess up the trip, they trick, they like never land. And then, you know, you go further out into the park and there's just the sound of people like playing a game like soccer or frisbee or something. And I, I sort of love the sounds of the park and going from one group to another. The, the West African and Caribbean people on the other side of Prospect Park that have a drum circle, you know. I guess you can sort of find it in the parks and the people. But I even like the sound of the screaming subway sometimes in the morning. You know, it's like my day's starting with a like, you know, I think we can, I, instead of being troubled by it, I start to get into the flow of it. Yeah, I was you just know. thinking the same thing, yeah. Every, it, it almost hurts more to be troubled by it or to sort of cover your ears and to try Take to stop it. Take out the headphones, yeah. be a part of it, interact with the city. You've chosen to live here. Go with it. <laughs> I agree. Uh, now, a couple questions from the audience. Who's a question? Hi there. Uh, you mentioned actually liking the sounds of the city. I wonder if there's any sounds that you that are kind of like nails on chalkboard that you just cannot stand that just get under your skin. That's for everybody. You can't just go with it. I that. have one. I, the 456 platform at Union Square is one of the worst sounds uh, in the city, <laughs> in my opinion. And that's the one with the metal gates that kind of come out to meet the train. It's, it's pretty horrific. Yeah, I, the, the the New York ambulances and fire trucks have a certain pitch that is very irritating. But within, when you go to other cities like Europe, suddenly it's as invasive, but for some reason it's more melodic and pleasant. I yeah. think that might be because it's not we're not as familiar. I don't know. Perhaps, There's something yeah. romantic about a European siren, maybe. <laughs> I like a European siren also. <laughs> And they're not coming from me. We're just a bunch of romantics. Yeah, no, I, I have a real problem with... Um, where I live in Brooklyn, there's lots of people with small babies. And the crying baby thing, because I'm a parent, means help, you know? And I just, I, if I'm not able to, it's someone else's kid, and they're just crying, 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 and they're pushing them, that drives me crazy. So I guess human noise. Oh.